The time has come to choose your weapon. Will it be the Moza SGP sequential shifter? Will it be the Moza HGP H pattern shifter? Or will it be both? You decide. Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual Motorheads. Man, do I have an awesome video planned for you today. We are going to be doing an in-depth review of the Moza HGPH pattern shifter. Yes, I showed you both of them, but this is part one, so that we can really do a deep dive. Flip, I hate that word, because everyone uses it on their channel. We're gonna do a deep dive into the HGP shifter. Now I've had this bad boy for the last four months. So this is not going to be a stupid unboxing. This is a no nonsense, no BS review of the shifter. So up next, let's zoom in and take a closer look at this bad boy. All right, welcome to my new product review table. Nice little fold out table I got myself here. But this is not about the table. This is about this bad boy. Yes, I'm gonna say it again. It's not an unboxing, so we don't need this. We only need to focus on this. So what can I tell you about the shifter after four months of using it? I love it. I freaking love it. It feels realistic. It has reverse and seventh gear. And the cool thing is it is locked. So you have to press down and in it goes in reverse. Same thing, press it down, in it goes in seventh gear. But I haven't used seventh gear yet. Because the kind of cars that I drive with this shifter is like your four gears or five gears, maximum six gears. Um, some guys complain on the internet, oh, my arms are too weak, I can't get it into reverse. I can't get it into seventh gear. Go to gym, lift some weights, stop being a pansy. The gear knob is interchangeable. Look how quickly I can take this one off. Here we go. I actually did put another gear knob on here that I ordered off Timo. It was absolutely rubbish and it was a little bit too long so it gave me lots of leverage which made this shifter feel weak. That's why my honest opinion just leave this shifter knob on here. Feels great, fits in your hand perfectly um, and it's nice and short which makes the shifts very tight. I love that. Comes with these two little rubber pads that you can add onto the shifter which dampens the noise a little bit and I think also protects the metal. They say that it utilizes a 15-bit non-contact high precision angle sensor which ensures positive and precise shifting and a long maintenance free life we'll have to see four months is not long bottom of the shifter has a crazy amount of m6 threaded holes it's almost like they've made provision for let's say for example you had a thrustmaster shifter and you've already drilled the holes Bada boom, bada bing, one, two, three, four, there they are. So you can mount them on that plate. Let's say you had the Fanatec shifter and you need to mount it. It has the same pattern as your Fanatec shifter. So 
I must give this to Moza. They've really went out of their way to make it easy to mount this to either a metal plate that already has holes drilled into it or your aluminium rig because it uses M8 screws through these holes. I've got it attached to my aluminium rig and this thing doesn't move. Dimensions of the shifter, 143 millimeter long, 100 millimeter wide and 241 millimeters high. Another cool thing about this shifter is the fact that it has a throttle blip system. Unfortunately, it only works with the Moza pedals. But if you have an entire Moza ecosystem, then that won't be a problem. What the throttle blip system does is, when you shift down, it pushes the revs up. So you don't need to do that fancy heel toe action. This shifter will do that for you, and it really works well. The shifter can connect to your PC via USB, or it can connect to your base, if it supports it, via this transit port using an RJ11 cable. So this shifter comes with a patented shock absorbing mechanism, which they say makes all of the shifts very smooth and satisfying. I mean, check this out. First, okay, I'm gonna hold it in my hand and I'm gonna put it into first gear. Check there. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, and sixth gear. And then of course, bada boom, bada bing. Come on, seventh gear. <laughs> it's really in there. That's what she said. <laughs> and when this is attached to your rig, it feels even more satisfying, especially when there's zero flex on your rig. I mean, I've got an aluminum rig. There's zero flex. It feels amazing. It feels like you're really racing. So yeah, I love the shifter. Before we jump into the Moza Pithouse software, I just want to show you how I mounted this shifter on my rig. So when I bought this rig, I was a little bit stressed because I was like wondering how am I gonna fit this on the rig? And it came with this 16 millimeter thick aluminum plate. This thing is solid. And it has four pre-drilled holes. And like I mentioned in the previous video, Moza was kind enough to put those same four holes. M6 holes on their shifter. So I can easily just plump that on there and then the rest with these two T nuts and M8 screws goes onto my aluminium frame. All right, easy as that. So let's jump into the software now and I'll show you how to set it up and what you can tweak. So now we are in Moza Pithouse. And if you don't have a HTP shifter, this little icon here on the left hand side will not be enabled for you. But once you plug this beauty in, this screen will be enabled. Okay, so let's first take a look at this section here at the bottom and make sure that all these different gears are working. Let's start with, rever with reverse. You can see there it goes. And just check how easy it is to <laughs> put it in reverse. So I don't know why people are complaining. First gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear, and seventh. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yep. So yeah, very, very simple. If there's something wrong, you can calibrate it here. Let's have a look at this little message that Moza displays. And it says, click on calibration, shift into reverse, shift into seventh gear, shift into reverse again. I'm not gonna do that because mine is already calibrated. Then let's move up to this section over here. Now remember this throttle blip downshift 
feature that I spoke about. This is where you can set it and where you can tweak it to how you want it. I do know that Automobilista, my favorite sim, does support this. And, and, and I do believe uh, Acero Corsa as well, yes, yeah. Automobilista 2 and Acero Corsa, definitely. So, let's have a look at these settings. Let's, let's look at the top one, Auto Downshift Throttle Blip. Let's have a look here. With this feature turned on, fuel is automatically replenished in the event of a brake downshift without the need to use heel toe technology, just like I said. In special scenarios, it may act by mistake. Oopsie, might lose some seconds there. So you can turn it off if you don't need to use this function. And it says here in red, always read that. Please turn off the downshift function that comes with the game when you turn on the smart downshift function to refill the fuel. So I know that in a set of Corsa, some of those cars has auto blip as well. So you're gonna have to play around there and see what works for you. Auto blip duration. I think that's pretty straightforward. Adjustable throttle action time when refueling. Different models may require different throttle action time. Can you imagine that? Having to come and change this for every single different car that you drive. So once again, I just leave it at default. You know, I mean, it's short, full, and long. And my friends, that is it. Beautiful shifter on the left. You can check that it's working here on the right hand corner. You can calibrate it there in the middle and then you can mess around with the throttle blip downshift system or throttle downshift blip system. <laughs> now for the fun part. Fun part for me at least, because I get to race. If you haven't noticed by now, one of the themes of this whole video has been the Toyota Supra. I have one on my t-shirt. I have one in the background, in the intro, as well as the rest of the video. And now I get to take a Supra, Toyota Supra, for a spin in a set of Corsa, showcasing the Moza HGP shifter. Guys, I cannot tell you more how awesome this thing is. And now you're gonna see it in action. Okay, so next up, let's race. Okay, so we're ready to race. We've got Ferrari F40s, we've got Ferrari GTOs, we have one Mazda RX-7 that we're racing against, and a Roof CTR Yellowbird, and then another Supra. I'm in a Supra 1993. Uh, the AI strength is set to 95%, and we're racing on Misty Loch. Let's go. 10th position. Get ready, mate, it's hammer time. And I'm starting from the back. Oh, come on. Bad start, but it's okay. Makes it more challenging. Car but this track requires a lot of concentration. We're only doing three laps. I'm not going to bore you to death. Cowley, good start. But this Toyota Supra, it is so loose, there's no grip. This corner here is very tricky. Car left. Oh my god, there goes the Ferrari. I wasn't expecting anything less. Only way I'm gonna pass these guys are in the corners. Because I like to break late. <laughs> Come on, get out of my way, buddy. How do I get past these guys? Clear 
left. Car left. Still there. Clear left. Left side. I'm gonna hit the wall! Oh, Clear left. Bit. I mean, I had that push. Tiny bit of aero damage there. You probably won't even feel it. Okay. Tiny little bit of aero damage. As long as the car can still go straight, everything's fine. Come on. Yeah, sometimes you can miss a shift with this shifter, the but it's not the end of Armstrong. the world. I think once you are 100% used to it, Car you left. won't make those kind of mistakes. Clear left. That's the stuff, we'll have some Yo. more of that. Oh, see, no grip. <laughs> Come on. Mine, Mr. Bosch. I should really do a video on driving that thing. The roof, yellow bird. Around the north life, yes. That thing is so difficult to control. We're seeing minor wear all around. Difficult corner there. No man, what am I doing? Pay attention to track limits. Please, Cowley. Yes. Yes, this really requires concentration. Which makes it difficult to talk and drive, eh? I need to pass this guy. I won't catch the guy there in front, but this one. One more lap to go. P5. One more lap, come on. Don't go off the track, man. Oh. Shifted into third instead of fourth. Pass this guy. Come on. Okay, Cowley, you're reeling. Header in. The gap is now 6 So close, yet no cigar. Get out of my way. On your right. Right side's clear. Come on. If I get past him, at least that'll put me in fourth place. I'm happy with that. Left side tires are cold. Yeah. That's a new fastest lap for Antia. No man, what is this guy doing? Yes! Oh, he's still not done with me. Yeah. <laughs> 
before. And that's it. End of the race. And did you see how awesome that HGP shifter is? It feels like the real deal. No jokes. And with that, back to the studio. And that brings us to the end of another video. And I really hope that you now have a better understanding of what the Moza HGP shifter has to offer. I love the shifter. I can compare it to previous shifters that I've owned, like the Thrustmaster, uh, Thrustmaster TH-8A or the Logitech. Those are children's toys in comparison to this. So I can highly, highly recommend this. Make sure that you tune in to the next video because in part two of the series, I'm going to be looking at the Moza SGP shifter in depth and help you decide whether you should get this one or the SGP shifter or both. So once again, thanks for tuning in and friends, I'll see you next time. Virtual